Hello everyone, welcome to week eight. So today we're gonna to talk about cell membranes and the transport of different materials through the membranes and what's in the membranes, okay? What they're made up of and, and all the things that are inside the plasma membrane. So start with uh, our plasma membrane. Let me make this font a little bit bigger. Okay, so we'll start with our plasma membrane. So inside that plasma membrane, um, so this is a picture of the membrane in here. Remember, it's first of all, a big fancy word, it's a phospholipid bilayer. Remember that it has a polar head, non-polar tail, and the bottom is the other way around. Non-polar tail and a polar head on the bottom. So you can have water outside and you can have water uh, inside as well, uh, but not in between. So because of those non-polar tails, there's a lot of materials that really can't get through and don't get through. So in the membrane, we have what are called uh, different uh, proteins. So it's are the, the, these little potatoes that are right here. Those are the little proteins uh, that we're going to talk about later. But those are the ones that are going to help facilitate or move things through the membrane. So think about I don't know, think about your cell and think about oxygen going into cells. Think about sodium, potassium going into your muscles. And so those, that's what these little proteins are, the little channels are. Um, there's also some cholesterol there. Remember we talk about um, testosterone and estrogen, how these lipid molecules and cholesterol make those hormones. So you have little cholesterols in there as well. It's, it's in the little, this little change right here. Um, then we're gonna have some uh, cell surface markers okay so it's these little these little markers that are in there that are just um, gonna gonna help uh, pass things through um, or differentiate or make them specific to different things in, that are in there um, and then we have um, what's going to happen here so we have these little filaments down here which are really not Point that's inside the cell. Remember how that's inside of the cell we talked about last week, kind of like the, the cytoskeleton, the, the structure of the inside of the cell. Um, and we're gonna have um, these glycoproteins. So again, these are other proteins over here. This chains over here, these lipids over here. Other proteins are on the inside only, not through. So it's all kinds of stuff that are going on here. So we have here's a big term. Um, the membranes are have something called selective permeability. Okay, so that's a big word. Um, let's pull that up. Selective permeability, which means when something when you have permeability, things go through. So things are going through the membrane. But when you have selective permeability, you select which things go through. So that's what selective permeability is. Um, selecting which materials enter and exit cell um, or move in and out of the cell or move through the membrane or any one of those words okay um, so we have that selective permeability so that's what the membrane is um, it lets so these proteins that's what they're going to do let some things in and not let other things in so we're really trying to take care of the cell itself so this is all just the membrane around one of the cells okay um, all right so remember this is our Phospholipid bilayer, which we've talked about a, a lot already, so you should know this by now. Um, hydrophilic or, or polar uh, head, and the hydrophobic and non-polar tail. So we won't get into detail of that. Um, here's our proteins, the pictures of those proteins. Again, um, there's also some areas that the protein doesn't like water, but it's just embedded in there to get things through the protein and into or out of the cell. Um, this picture just means that there's the membrane isn't really just like a stiff stick like it's really fluid um, there's movement of, of of materials around there those uh the tails themselves can can move through and get a little open or, or closer get other materials in there but only selectively so only some materials that they want to get in there like cholesterol which is in here um non-polar it goes inside so here we have um like hydrocarbon tails or just the, the non-polar tails. Um, unsaturated, remember this unsaturated, it's a little bit that you have on the sides. Uh, when it's saturated, it's straight. Talked about those fatty acids, so 
So it's like, so it's very fluid. Things go through, and and the memory is really moving. It's really not just like a wall, complete wall, stiff. Okay. <clears throat> Here is remember the um, endomembrane system, um, how things move through. Remember, it starts in the ER or um, the smooth ER um, or the rough ER, and then you're gonna have these things that are we make proteins that we make, and they get into this little uh, vacuum. And then um, this one carries them, takes them to the Golgi, and then from the Golgi, they'll go outside through the membrane. Okay, so that's the membrane. Um, you get the proteins on the outside, you got some little receptors here on the edges. Okay, so that's really um, the movement of those materials. So we talked last week about the specifics of the cell, but now we're talking about how they move outside of the cell. <clears throat> we have what's called uh, transmembrane proteins. So these are the little proteins that let things in through. And then and remember proteins, you have primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary structures. So they're all alpha helix, beta pleated. Uh, so those are the proteins that are going to let some things in. Okay. Um, okay. So we're going to talk about different types of transport. Transport. Oh, okay. We'll mess with them. Transport across. A plasma membrane. How things move in and out um, of the membrane. So we have what's called um, passive transport. I'll make this bold as well. We have what's called passive transport, and then we have also active transport. But first, I want to talk about passive transport. Okay. So passive transport um, it means transporting or the moving of molecules through the membrane. And passive just means it has it requires no energy. No energy required. Okay, so let's just put transport is movement of molecules through membrane. Um, and through passive transport, you really don't require energy to move things through. Okay. Um, there's also inside of passive we have what's called simple diffusion. Um, we have simple diffusion, we have facilitated diffusion, and we have osmosis. So I'm going to add a little bit in between these. So make sure you leave some room. So we're going to add some, some bullet points in between each one of those, okay? Um, so we have simple diffusion, facilitated, and osmosis, okay? <clears throat> simple diffusion is kind of like um, if someone is is smoking and the smoke in the room is just really moving through the air to different areas that's simple diffusion it really doesn't require anything to help it move it's just going to move by itself so you have the cigarette smoke making a carne sala you got all that smoke moving through the air that's simple diffusion the molecules are simply just going to move by itself to wherever they want to go okay um we have movement it's okay so simple movement of molecules is pretty bad. There it is. Movement of molecules um, from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Okay, and I want I left it bold because that's pretty important. Okay. Um, typically, this is all in in, uh, in passive transport. So simple diffusion. They move from high concentration to low concentration. What does that mean? That means that, say you have a cell and there's a lot of stuff outside and less inside. So they're gonna move in there to reach equilibrium or to reach a balance. So everything needs to have a balance, okay? So the cells wanna be balanced. So the stuff will move from high concentration to low concentration. Uh, movement along a, a Concentration gradient. So concentration gradient is just the area of the concentration. Okay, so let's look at um so let me um let me add here so I don't forget before I get ahead of myself. To reach equilibrium. Okay. That's the biggest purpose. Get that balance in those cells. Trying to get that equilibrium. Um, what does equilibrium mean? Same on both sides. The same amounts of, of whatever molecule we're talking about on both sides, say the same amount of, of salt on both sides, the same amount of 
of sodium and potassium on both sides. Um, <clears throat> so let's look at these, uh, this image. Um, you have molecules of over here, little molecules on the left, and the right we have water. So then um, there's a lot on the left. That's a high concentration of these molecules on the left and very low or even none on the right. So what's going to happen is through simple diffusion, the molecules are going to move to an area from, from high to low. Why? To reach that balance. Now we have the same amount on the left and the same amount on the right. See the difference? Um, oh, actually, see that. Let me see if I can draw a little bit here. If I need to draw anything. There. So we have these little molecules here on the left, and there's nothing in here. So we're trying to get a balance of the same amount on both sides. So they move from high concentration to an area of low concentration to have the balance or the equilibrium. Okay, same thing here. We have two different molecules on the left and on the right. Um, we're trying to get through and have even on both sides, reach equilibrium. Okay, so these purple ones on the right is high, on the left is low because there's no purple ones. So those are moving to the left, while the yellow ones on the left are high and the right is low, they're moving to the right. And now you have a balance of both on both sides. Okay, so that's simple diffusion. Okay, and the biggest example is oxygen or carbon dioxide e exchange. So let me write that down here. O2 slash CO2 exchange. Remember how we breathe in oxygen and breathe out uh, CO2. So when you have, say you have these little little cells, um, these red blood cells that they come from your lungs, they're going to have a lot of oxygen. They come right from your lungs because that's what you're breathing in. So they're flowing through, they're moving through, and they're going to reach areas where you have cells, say cells in your tissues or in your muscles or wherever, that have higher concentrations of CO2 and not oxygen. So once they get close, in this image right here, see if I can highlight. So say look at this image right here. Um, these have a lot of oxygen. These have a lot of CO2. So what's going to happen is as they're getting through, um, the oxygen is going to move inside and the CO2 is going to move to that cell. So then they're going to come back to the lungs, um, to the alveolus, to, to the area in the lungs, and now they're going to release their CO2. So you can breathe it out, and then the oxygen is going to fill them up again, and then they're going to come back down again with O2, and then they go back up with CO2, and then come back down with O2. So that's kind of like an exchange uh, from high concentration to low, and that's simple diffusion. So that's one of the easy examples. Okay. Um, here's again, here's the same picture. Um, O2, CO2, and O2 is moving in, CO2 is moving out. So same thing we just talked about. Okay. <clears throat> now we have, so that's simple diffusion, just movement from high to low, simply just because there's a lot on one side and there's less on the other, and they're just going to go through. Uh, facilitated diffusion. That means some of those um, molecules need help to get through. The memories don't let them. So we have these proteins that are going to facilitate the transfer or the movement of the molecules inside or outside of the cell. Okay. Um, so facilitated diffusion involves a protein. Take the ball down. And the attack signs. Okay, so it involves a protein. Um, we have what's called a channel protein. Um, and this little channel protein, it's right here. It's just, uh, it's just um, it really has like a little channel or like a little area in the middle that lets uh, the molecules go in, inside or outside, okay? Um, so that's a channel protein. It allows molecules through. So it really just has like this little uh, driveway or freeways for the molecules to pass through and to get inside. Okay, so it's blocking the the hydrophobic, hydrophilic, the heads and the tails, the membrane itself, and it's letting some things in. It's kind of like a little a little bouncer in the club, letting people in, people out. It's kind of like that. Um, and then you have um, what's called a carrier protein. So that's another example. So instead of having a channel protein that just lets them through, we have a carrier protein. What does a carrier protein do? Um, it, it like attaches or it, or it uh, sticks to the certain molecule and it lets it through, or it binds to molecules to let them through. So here's a little example. 
um, carry protein alternative to conformation, moving a solute across the membrane. Um, protein can transport to either sides or inside or outside. Um, remember again, down the concentration gradient for the solute. So there's a lot here moving in inside, okay? So no energy is required. So we're just gonna open up, grab it, and then let it out on the other side. It's kind of like, oh, come over here, and then it just moves it over. It's kind of like that. So that's why it's called a carrier. It kind of carries the molecule through the membrane, inside or outside, okay? Um, and then we have what's called osmosis. So osmosis, it's also uh, the transport, but it's gonna be um, of water, okay? So it's gonna be the movement of water across the membrane. Anybody seen the movie Osmosis Jones? I was like, maybe I'm a little old, but that was way back when. I think I was in like high, middle school or something like that, elementary school. I used to put them in my classes, but um, it's just it's a pretty cool movie. Anyways, um, so when we talk about the movement of water, okay, we're going to talk about, remember, uh, a solution. Let me type this down here. Solution is solute plus solvent. Remember, a solvent is usually water. Most of the time it's water. Solute is going to be um, whatever chemical we add to mix with water. So if you're making some Kool-Aid, uh, the solute is going to be the, the little Kool-Aid pack. Uh, if you're mixing salt and water, the salt is the solute. If you're mixing, I don't know, making coffee, the coffee is the solute. So every time, um, that's what it is. The solute is the other chemical and the solvent is the water. So when we talk about the movement of water, water is always going to try to go to dissolve the solute. So it's going to try to break it down. So it's going to try to go to places where, um, where there's a lot of solute and kind of break it down and bring it down to even it out again to reach equilibrium, okay? So when we talk about, say, we have a 10 molar solution and then we have a one molar solution, um, which one has more solute? Or which one has the most, say, the salt or the most Kool-Aid? The 10 molar has more solute. Okay, that's what 10 molar, it's like a more concentration, molarity is a concentration of, of whatever chemical you're adding in there. So it has 10 times the amount of that solute than the one molar, which has one times the amount. Okay, so make sure you, you know that. So say you have a cell and you have five molar outside and one molar inside, which one has the most? The five molar, which is outside. It has the most salt or the most biggest solute. So I'm gonna explain a little more, okay? so. Stay with me, stay with me. <clears throat> okay. Um, so water, let's add this in here. Water moves to where the solute concentration is higher. Okay. So water is always going to move to where the, the concentration of the solute is higher to break it down, to dissolve it, to to kind of get that that balance, okay? So water is always gonna to move to wherever the concentration is the highest. And I'll give you a couple examples uh, in a little bit. <clears throat> okay, um, let's see, so here's an example. Um, I kind of like that example, okay. So here's a low concentration on the left. So we're looking at this little tube right here. Okay, so let's look at this one first. We have a lower concentration of solute, say sugar in this case on the left, and a higher concentration of sugar. And then we have water in here in this tube. Okay, so the blue is the water. Um, the middle is a little membrane that's gonna let stuff through, okay? Um, it says right here that the selective, remember selective, only certain things go through, selectively permeable membrane. Um, only sugar molecules, those can't pass through the pores, but the water molecules can. So we select which molecules move, so we're letting water move, okay? Um, so now, since you have a higher concentration of sugar on the right and a lower on the left, where is the water going to move to? It's going to move to the highest concentration to the right. So now we see this image where there's water down here, there's water way up here. Why? Because we're trying to get that balance, that equal concentration, same concentration. So um, think about it. If you have less sugar, you could take a little bit of water out to have a good concentration. If you have a lot of sugar, you can add more water to have the same concentration. 
So you have the same concentration, less sugar, less water, more sugar, more water, but the same concentration. So water moves from low to high concentration, okay? Uh, remember in the other ones, water moves from high to low. So where it just moves through whatever there's a lot to whatever there's less to balance it out. But here water is kind of like the opposite. It moves from low concentration of solute to a high concentration of solute. Okay. Let's see if we have some examples here. Okay. Uh, we're going to split this into three different solutions. You've probably heard of these before. Um, we're going to just talk about, briefly about them. Okay. So we have what's called hypotonic solution. Okay. What does this mean? Hypotonic uh, solution. That means the solute concentration in the outside is lower than the solute concentration in the inside. Okay. Um, so the concentration the outside is lower than is lower than inside. Um, so what's what's going to happen? So water moves from low to high. So if outside is low, inside is high, where is the water going to go to? The water is going to go inside. So what's this going to cause? It's going to cause this cell to get really big and big and full of water because the concentration inside is big. Okay, so you have this cell here um, on the left. Okay, so you have, um, when we talk about, we're going to talk about animal cells and plant cells. We're not going to get into detail, but when you think about an animal cell, we have a lot of water inside our cell. It's eventually going to burst and it's going to pop open, kind of like a balloon full of water and just, just explode because it's too much water. It's not good for us. We really don't want a high amount of water. We want a balance. We want a good balance. When you talk about plant cells, plant cells need water. So you really want, they want a lot of water inside their cells. Why? Maybe there's times where there's a drought when they can't get water. So if they keep a lot of water inside their cells, they can um, feed the plant itself, I guess you can say, and, and have water readily available because they have a lot inside the cell. So then you have what's called turgid. That's just another word of being uh, happy, I guess you can say. And it's just full of water in the inside. Um, so that's hypotonic. Okay, so the water will move to the inside. Um, so let me fix my spelling and add a couple things. So the solute concentration on the outside is lower than the solute concentration on the inside. Water will move to the inside. Okay, water will go inside, creating a big old balloon full of water or a big old cell full of water eventually Hopefully not exploding, but it is going to go get bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's, it's not good for animal cells. It's good for those plant cells, okay? So water moves into the cell. Um, good for plant cells, not animal cells, okay? So then we have hyper hypertonic solution, okay? So we're going to have three, hypo, hyper, and iso. Um, so we're going to talk hypertonic. So what's going to happen in the hypertonic? Um, there's a higher. No, let's. Uh, I'm going to use the same word as the other one. The solute concentration in the outside is higher than the solute concentration in the inside. Okay, concentration outside is higher. So remember, water moves from low to high. So where's the water going to go? Water is going to leave the cell and go to the outside to help break down um, all the solutes that's on the outside. So what's this going to cause? It's going to cause like this like shriveled or denatured um, little cell in here um, where it's losing water. It's going to lose its shape. Same thing for the water molecules. It's just going to be like a, see those plants where you haven't watered them in a while and they're just drying up it's all cells that really have no water inside of them and they're really losing the water okay so the water the water will move outside of the cell okay and well that's not good for any of them <laughs> the cell okay. the cell will shrink 
So this is just uh, kind of memorizing all three different ones. Hypertonic, hypotonic, and the last one, we got isotonic. And iso will be the same. So the concentration, solute concentration in the outside is the same as in the inside, okay? And that's the balance we want, equilibrium. Look at our healthy uh, blood cell here in the middle, in animal cells. And we have this perfect cell which has a good uh, equal amount on the outside and the inside. And we have a normal plant cell. And it's not really super, super happy that it has a lot of water because it really does want more water, but at least it's a healthy cell. Okay. So water, where does water want to move? Water moves in both directions. So it's not just going to choose one or the other. It's going to have a balance, so it's going to move both ways to kind of even it out. Okay. Um, awesome. Okay, so hypotonic, hypertonic, and isotonic. Um, here's a fancy word. Osmoregulation. Osmoregulation. Think about the word osmoregulation. So osmosis is the movement of water. To regulate it is kind of to keep it balanced. So it just means water balance. Osmoregulation. And that's how it is. It's just a little fancy word to kind of where well, we want that good balance of water. Um, okay. So now, let me see. Get out of here. Okay. So we talked about, that's a lot about passive transport. Now let's jump into... Um, active transports, active transport, okay, so unlike passive transport, active transport, let me take out the bold and the U, requires energy, um, it requires energy, um, it is movement against the concentration gradient so it's not from high to low where it's just going to simply move it's going to be against the concentration so it's going to be from low concentration to high concentration okay so movement from low concentration so now i should put movement from low concentration to high concentration. So let's see if we got some images here. Okay, um, yeah, we got one there. Okay, so we got what's called the sodium potassium pump. NAK pump. Sodium potassium pump. So what, what does that tell you? That little pump that moves sodium and potassium. See how these words are pretty easy. Um, so pumps sodium ions out of the cell and potassium inside both against a concentration gradient and it requires ATP. So we can write that down here. Uh, pumps and A plus and K plus ions into the cell. Or just pumps the ions against a concentration gradient. Low to high. Why? What does this mean? Okay, think about our muscles. Every time our muscles are going to contract or going to release, we need sodium, potassium, calcium moving around and around and around. So you need a high concentration of sodium, high concentration of potassium. So this means that, say, inside the cell, you have some uh, potassium or some calcium now or some sodium. Um, you're going to move it to get more and more and more. So it's not going to go from a lot to a little to balance. It's going to go from a little where there's a lot to more and more and more to where there is a lot because you want more and more and more. So it's really, it's not just flowing to keep a balance. It's the movement to get more to one area or more to the other area. Okay, so here's uh, the cytoplasmic. So let's look at this image. It says the cytoplasmic sodium, which is cytoplasm, in the inside binds to the pump. Um, energy comes in, so that's ATP. So what is this ATP? It's kind of like that switch to turn the pump on. So it's kind of like, say when you inflate a, a mattress, you kind of got to push the pump or connect it to the wall to get that air pump to inflate the mattress. So it's that energy. Instead of you just blowing or just moving in, it's gonna 
connect to the energy, it's going to open it up and move those sodium potassium, so those sodium ions outside. Um, the potassium, same thing but the opposite, is outside. It's going to come in here, um, energy, and the phosphate, and it's going to release the potassium inside. Okay, so here's our little, uh, our, well, that was our pump. Um, this one is just a concentration of ions, but that's all it does. So it's, say you have out here, um, say over here you have a lot of NAs. So we just put a lot of NAs. Actually, let's just put some pluses over here. You have a lot, you have a lot, you have a lot, but you need more. Over here you have a little bit. What would be with passive transport or before these, there's a lot, they'll move inside so you can have that balance, right? But not in this case. We don't want a balance. We really want to send the molecules where they need to go because it's like sending reinforcements. They need more. So we're sending the sodium outside to get more on the outside. Same thing with the potassium, okay? <clears throat> Um, okay, um, then we also have the membrane potential. So let me take out the underlined. So that's just the cell membrane and it's just the movement of ions um, to have uh, the, a good concentration of these ions across. So that's the cell membrane in here and the membrane potential is really just the movement of ions. Okay. Of ions. Um, a charge to so have an A charge on both sides. So I think there's an image here. Okay, so here's a membrane. So this is going to be negative. Now we have a lot of anions and we have a lot of cations. Okay, so it's just these ions are going to move to kind of either make this very negative or make this very positive, whatever we need. And I remember how on opposites attract. So you're making that protein and you have pluses and minuses and you kind of need that little bond. So ions can move around to kind of you know, change the charge of those cells or those molecules. Okay. So here it is. Um, you have a lot of pluses on the top, minus on the bottom. The membrane potential um, makes this one positive on the inside and negative on the outside. So you're able to move the ions. So it's really just the movement of ions across. Okay, we're almost done. Uh, stay with me for like three more minutes, okay? So a little quick uh, review. Uh, we have passive and active transport. Okay, so remember we have um, passive we have here on the left. It's just diffusion, just simple diffusion, moving from high to low. Um, then we have facilitated where you need those proteins. Uh, you need those different proteins. Uh, we have the, the binding proteins and the, the channel proteins where they just have this little opening where stuff goes through or they bind and attach to move things and transport them across. Those are the transport proteins. On the right, we have the active transport where you need energy to open these channels or open these proteins and to get things through or outside because it's going against the balance or it's going against the concentration gradient, okay? So it's easier to move from when there's a lot to a little bit, but it's harder to move from when there's a little bit to a lot. They really don't want to move, so you need energy to open those channels up, okay? And then last to finish up, we're going to talk about what's called um, bulk movement, okay? So bulk movement, that just means uh, the movement of, of these molecules or materials, they're inside or outside the cell. So we have what's called endocytosis. We have what's called exocytosis. So in endocytosis, endo is inside, so it moves materials into the cell. So that's endocytosis. Um, so you're trying to move materials inside of the cell. It's right here. Um, you can have two types of endocytosis. You can have phago, phago or phagocytosis, and you can have pinocytosis. Okay. Um, so in phagocytosis, it's really just uh, this cell. It's kind of like going to eat it up, kind of like Pac-Man. So the, the membrane is kind of like open up, and you have something there. Like a, it says right here, see, a food or some other particle, say something, a, a whole cell or something that's really bad. Um, that membrane is going to kind of like open and just like eat it up and bring it inside the cell. 
Once you're inside, then you're going to break it down with all those enzymes. So that's endocytosis through phagocytosis or through eating kind of like Pac-Man. Okay. Um, see right here, it's kind of like eating that uh, bacterium here on the right. An amoeba engulfing a bacterium via phagocytosis. So this little amoeba is kind of like eating it up and bringing it inside and then it's going to close up and then digest it inside. Um, pinocytosis. Um, so gulps droplets. So it's kind of like little drops. So it gets in here and little droplets of stuff just going in. See this image on the right? So it kind of gives like a little opening. Like, All right, come in, come in. And then it kind of gives it like a little plate. And then it transports it inside. Um, so that's kind of pinocytosis. So those are the two. So this one eats the material or the molecule, I guess. Uh, and this one's going to be small droplets. Um, and we're just going to really just going to take it in in little, little vacuoles and vesicles and just move it inside the cell. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And then we have receptor mediated endocytosis. So we have receptor mediated. Um, and that, what does that mean? And it means that receptors, you have little receptors on the edges or on the outside. And those receptors are going to receive certain molecules that are going to let them come inside. Not everything, uh, only the ones that fit in those receptors. So see, this receptor is kind of like a Y. Those circles don't fit in, but the triangles fit in. So those triangles will fit into the receptor, and the receptor will let it go inside. Okay, So receptor... Um, so, um, so we kind of, let's say, um, acquire specific or let inside. How can I label this? I don't know. The introduction of specific molecules. Yes. So specific, kind of like uh, selective permeability, kind of like selection. So that's what receptor mediated it receive, it receives certain ones only the ones you want okay and then on exocytosis um that was endo it's stuff in exo it's just stuff moves out of the cell so see how this was maybe this was created back in the smooth er and it went through the golgi and the golgi kind of fixed it up and then i sent it out like that it goes outside releases it and then it just binds to the membrane so moving the molecules outside of the cell. That's just exocytosis. Okay, awesome. Now, quick review, um, just to finish off, a couple questions so you know. Okay, say if an animal cell is placed in distilled water, what will happen to the cell over time? Okay, so we have this animal cell and you have this little cup of water, distilled water. Distilled water is like water like super cleaned out where it only has H2O and that's it. So it has no solute, it's only H2O. Um, so what if you put a cell inside? What's going to happen to the cell? Where is the water going to move? To the inside of the cell or the water is going to move to the outside of the cell? So remember, it goes from low concentration to high. So if the outside water has a low concentration and the cell has a high, the water is going inside the cell. Okay? And the cell will lice or burst. Okay? So it's going to move um, inside the cell. So let me start trying it. Water. Water will move inside the cell. And the cell eventually is going to fall. Water, 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 and just, poof, just pop, kind of like a balloon. Okay? What will happen to a plant cell in a hypertonic solution? Oh, here comes the terms hypo, hyper, iso. So let's go to our notes right here, real quick. Hypertonic, the solute concentration on the outside is higher than the inside. So water moves from uh, low to high. So where's the water going to go? Where it's highest, which is to the outside. So water will move to the outside and the cell will shrink. Water will move to the outside. Since it's losing water, the cell is going to be shrinking down. Okay. <clears throat> what are the major differences between passive transport and active transport? Remember, in passive transport, no energy required. Um, movement along a concentration gradient. Active transport requires energy. It moves against the concentration gradient. Okay, so passive transport, no energy. Active does. 
um, passive transport is along the concentration, active transport against the concentration. So that's it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in class on Wednesday.